Hello, avid readers, book nerds, and casual observers. Welcome to the Read Along, brought to you by the Lit Roundtable. I'm Anna. And I'm Joseph. And today we are talking about Hall of Smoke by H.M. Long. All right. Welcome to the new Read Along. New Read Along. New Read Read Along. Who (laughs) dis? I was just saying the exact same thing. Um, (laughs) This is fun. This is very different from our last book. Mm-hmm. Um, but still first person. True. Still first person, but not, but a different kind of first person. Yes. This person is one not POV. writing. <laughs> one yeah. so far, one POV, and they're not. It's not like they're writing. It's not like mm-hmm. a diary. Right. Um, so we're we're in the story with her. Yes. It's like she's telling it, telling the tale around a campfire. Speaking of, who is she? What's her name? Hessa. Hessa. Is her name. She is our POV character. She's, She's in, having a tough time. She is having a rough start of it. Mm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So it kind of it kind of opens opens up in this uh, bleak moment. You know, she just hiked up a mountain. Mm-hmm. She's trying to perform a a ritual for her deity mm-hmm. who is um it Goddess. is pronounced the goddess of or, war. Yes, the goddess of war, not Athena. No. <laughs> this is not Rome. This is a fantasy world and the goddess of war is like an owl. Like well, thing she, or like the messengers she, are owls. She utilizes owls which is somehow connected to her sister. I don't, there's a lot of mythology in here that I have a lot of questions about. <laughs> Right. I think I think we're supposed to and that it'll yes. it'll answer itself eventually. We, I believe we're little so. babies. Little <laughs> yes. babies. <laughs> yes. Um but the goddess's name is Ing. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so Hessa's on the mountain trying to she's pleading for forgiveness because she has done something wrong on accident. Right. Um which we find she's out saying like I didn't know. I didn't know it was him. All this stuff. We kind of have to like piece it together for ourselves. Like, yeah. Um, okay. Question for you, Joseph, and you can cut this out. Okay. Maybe we should talk about this on, or you can leave it in. I don't care. Um, do we want to go through this chapter by chapter? Or we just want to talk about it organically, kind of like we did the Obi Wan stuff. We can do more organically. That's okay. fine with me. I like that too. Okay. Because then we don't have to be like, well, in this chapter, this was revealed. We just talk about it. Yeah. 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 So she's she's going on about this um, person that she feels guilty because she didn't know who he was. We find out mm-hmm. that he's a he's an Algot, which there's a they, <laughs> I pause because the way they talk about people from other nations is right triggering in some way for me. I and they're very hostile. Yes. You know, um, and you, we do kind of learn about that in this section too, with the, the Algat, Algat people where Mm -hmm. they will every, every single year they raid the country that, uh, has us in and they have to fight them every single year in the spring. So it's like, there's a lot of animosity there. Yeah. Um, And this is like part of her purpose as an Angie priestess. Is to fight mm-hmm. the the Algot because um, they're like trained warriors for the goddess of war. It makes sense. Yes, the Ingi are. Yes. Um. Um. And yeah, so she's repenting for this sin. We find out that when she was younger, there was a vision about this man with a gold eye and the hound at his yeah. feet. Um, Mm -hmm. which, you know, is the person that she let into the hall of smoke. Um, and she should have killed him and she didn't. So she's begging forgiveness and she's not getting an answer and it's raining and it's very bleak. Like you said. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was really interesting when, to me, when she was talking about their, their gods and their deities, how they're not, she says they're not immortal. Right. And it, that they can be distracted. They're not omniscient and or they're, om- omnipotent or whatever. Or um, omnipresent. Like, they are yeah. not all places at all times. 
they are physical beings that go places. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing and strange. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're they're basically like they're very powerful beings, but they're not like they can be killed. Right. Yeah. She talks a little bit about the um, the gods of the old world and how the gods and goddesses now are the children of the gods of the old world. Yes. But they haven't been around forever. So it feels right. like we're in fairly fresh traditions here. Maybe. Yeah. Except there's runes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. lots of blood magic, which is kind of cool. It is kind of reminding me of the book that I just got done reading in the sh- uh, Shadow of the Gods, where it's like kind of Viking esque. You know, mm-hmm. their their names are are very uh, Norse sounding to me. Yeah, Northern European. Um, yeah, and they've got these runes. They've got rune magic. They have axes and swords and spears and stuff. It's it's kind of giving me some Viking vibes, but um, very pagan. We obviously we do, yes, very <laughs> pagan. Um, we do meet uh, in that first chapter uh, her husband Eater mm-hmm. and her cousin Iske, who come to try to like figure out where she went because she's been missing. And basically, basically, we learn that she got banished. Because she failed to kill this guy that you're, you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And Amoscat she's trying to... Is the guy's name. Yeah, Amaskat. And she's trying to get penance done and out of the way and, and hopefully get like inducted back in to the good graces right. of the Hall of Smoke. Yeah, because they wear um, metal collars if they're an mm-hmm. Ingi priest or priestess. And hers has been removed. Um Mm-hmm. For her shortcomings, so, and her, her husband and her cousin are just kind of the best. Um, yeah, because they're like, even if you're banished, you're not banished from us. Like we're still here for you. And then the typical fantasy thing happens. <laughs> and then there's the cult. Then Uncle Owen and Aunt Baru get torched. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> um. Yeah. Then you've got your call to action moment. So while she, while she's up on the mountain, uh, those, you know, those all got people that we were talking about, uh, decided to attack on it on the off season, a bunch of cheaters. <laughs> they... And not just a normal raid. Like mm-hmm. it's a, it's a massacre. Um, right. And they kill a lot of people in the village and also in the hall of smoke, which is like the temple. Um, yeah, there's a lot of dead people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she does manage to discover that, um, a friend of hers is not dead and her baby is not dead. Not Hessa's, her friend's baby. Um. Yes. Yes. And so that kind of becomes her new mission to get them, keep them safe. So the... The call to action being everyone is dead now in my village. <laughs> and she does, she does in the Hall of Smoke, she finds the bodies of Eder and Iska mm-hmm. who are slain. And then we get the first, we do get the first look at the powers that the um, Igni have. And they have this sort of uh, battle fury that, that they can invoke and it's kind of like raging in D and D, like barbarian rage. Yeah, kind and of. And they basically kind of just go beast mode, like their blood is set on fire, and they go berserk. Um, and we also find out that it gives them like super healing. Mm-hmm, so every yeah. like they, she spends a lot of time like cutting her fingers for like to access blood for different rituals. But every time yeah. she like ignites the ingi fire, it heals those little cuts that she makes. Um, right, which is kind of kind of cool. Convenient ability for a barbarian. Just yes. saying. <laughs> yes. You know. <laughs> yes. They get cut up a lot. Um, yeah. So she she has a moment where she pretty brutally dispatches one of the raiders because he mistakes her for just a regular person because she doesn't have a collar on. Mm-hmm. Um, but then she does get captured. 
her and her friend, whose the name is you Six, want to say the name Sixnet. Sixnet, yes. And she calls her Six. Yeah. So, like the number. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. So they do get captured, and and then uh, once once they're captured, we have our first flashback. Yeah. Chapter. Um. So we're kind of going back and forth now, kind of. Kind and of that's Liza also, Black Lamora esque. I was about to say that. Yeah, it's kind of a it is kind of a trope with fantasy books to have like and it, I feel like the first thing that I encountered that did a lot of that was Arrow. Uh you know how oh. they went like the show Arrow, yeah. how they went back and forth in the episodes between current time and past with him like becoming Green Arrow. I feel like that's kind of what that's something that I've seen more and more of. Now, I don't know if like Arrow necessarily started that trend, but Definitely I see it. Not. I, it I utilized it. it though. Sorry, I just that like, was like the first time I noticed it, and then now I notice it a lot more. Yeah, you know that is not a trope that I have utilized in my own writing, except for like in prologues. And now that right. you say that, um, that could solve some of my plot issues. <laughs> there you go. So, there you go, dude. Man, now I'm excited to go write. Happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I've never. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Flashbacks, man flashbacks like putting them in their own chapter or in their own section so they can like exist as their own part of the story which Mm -hmm. the bone witch in that series by rincha pekka also does oh my gosh what am i you know what you can learn what have i been doing (laughs) you can learn how to tell a story and still the best teacher is just reading a gosh darn book (laughs) Yeah. A gosh darn yeah. book. <laughs> Isn't that a, I think that's a Stephen King quote where he was like, if you don't have time to read, you don't have time to write. So yeah. uh, you got to be reading, man. Absolutely. So there you go. Awesome. Anyway. But yeah, this book does it too. So <laughs> we have, we had two chapters in this section that were flashback chapters. So yeah. Yeah. So the first, the first flashback chapter is, I think it's, I'm a little confused because the priestess is like, you had your first kill today, right? Yeah. But then we find this is chapter out chapter 3. Yeah. But then we find out in the next flashback that before she's even met the high priestess she had killed two people. But we don't know oh, yeah. the details of it. So I'm a little confused by what the priestess meant by her first kill. Maybe she meant the first Alga and maybe the thing she could I don't know. There's still a lot of questions to be answered. Obviously. Maybe it was just her first her first kill as an Inky. Maybe. That'd be yeah. my theory. Yeah. But... I mean we're we're still very fresh into the book. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and she's, this is when the priestess reveals that flashback, or that vision of the, of the man with one golden eye and the hound, mm-hmm. um, and that she must kill him. So. And we just learned in the previous chapter that the, the man that she was tasked to kill by Ing and did not, um, has one golden eye and one blue eye, mm-hmm. right? I think so. Um. Haven't heard anything about a hound yet, though. I don't think. No, I'm just assuming that it was there. <laughs> yeah. At this point, I'm making some assumptions. A spirit animal. Um. Um. Yeah, oh, be. unless the deity that the that those that the mountain raider people worship is like a dog, like maybe I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. I, that hasn't. I don't think that's been revealed yet. Yeah, we we they did reveal the name of their deity. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but um. I don't remember. I don't think we know what animal they they associate with. I was having a lot of um, there's a lot of new names, you know. When you start a new fantasy yeah. series, you gotta you gotta wade through the the big batch of new names for a little yes. bit. Yes. Yes. Um, but um, yeah. Speaking of names, here we go. The baby hadn't been named yet. Mm-hmm. So while they're in captivity, um, Hessa volunteers to do the naming ritual for this baby because she finds out that they were waiting for her to come back to do it which is just heartbreaking because now the baby's father is dead yeah so which is controversial because you're not a priest anymore ah right yeah because you've been banished you don't have a collar Uh, i am glad to see that um she still has her powers even though she was banished yes because that is something that I don't like to have to tolerate for long as a reader, 
when the person loses their powers and it's their quest to get them back, I need that wrapped up quick. Otherwise, I'm going to start getting real annoyed at like the situations and it's just a chore. Um, Agreed. I'm I'm glad that she didn't lose her powers. Um, and the chief complaint for like a franchise would be My Hero Academia with Deku breaking all his bones every time he uses his powers. I'm really glad that he is starting to figure his life out. <laughs> You know? Spoiler man for like the first two episodes. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> that deck. Okay. This is a total tangent. Deku's doesn't bother me because it's not that he's trying to reclaim his powers. He's trying to learn his powers. It's not quite true. the same thing. It's like having your powers true. stripped away from you. That one powers isn't as bad. Away is like 11 in Stranger Things. Spoiler. For like part of a season not yeah. being able to do her mind stuff. For sure, yeah. So I'm, and also spoiler again for for this latest season. I'm glad that she got them back <laughs> because that was going to be really annoying. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Like, I get why it's a thing. Like, oh, we're gonna t- like take the training wheels off and pull the crutch out from under you, and you can't use your powers anymore, and you're gonna have to grow as a person. I understand the mechanic of it, storytelling wise, but it's just annoying, and I don't like reading it. Or yeah. watching it. I want them to be able to be a superhero again. Anyway. But that didn't happen in this, so... <laughs> Thank goodness! <laughs> it all worked out. Although, um, she still has the crippling <laughs> depression and anxiety about, did I cause the death of all my people? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she might have. <laughs> yes. We don't know. It seems... Unclear. Probable. Yeah. Um, Yeah, no, she, you know, I I think that H.M. Long has done a really nice job writing that kind of anxiety and bleakness that this character is going through. Like, I could feel viscerally how she was feeling in the moment. Yeah. Um, And even like the... Well done. Go go on. Oh, okay. And uh, even like when she was talking about the feeling of how like oh man all of my my friends and family are going to go to the whatever they call it the high halls or or something like when you die yeah and and i'm gonna be bound to the earth because i was banished and forsaken and i'm gonna be bound to the earth until the end of time until the earth is unmade and i'm just like oof she really captured the hell anxiety good job hm long yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, no, I thought that was really well done. Um, and also, like, the stress and responsibility she feels now for the villagers that she wasn't able to do the death rites for. Like, she was going to do the death rites, and then she got sidetracked looking for her husband and her cousin, and mm-hmm. she doesn't get it done before they're captured. And so now all these people that she's stuck with are mad at her because she could have done the death rites and, like, sent their souls on to the high halls but no they're just stuck in the earth until she can get it done yep or until somebody gets it done yeah it's like oh my gosh talk about pressure (laughs) um but it's also possible that the high priestess isn't dead because she was off in the woods so she might not be the only one left right right so i kind of so a few thoughts one the high priestess svala I'm not convinced that she didn't have something to do with it. Maybe she, because she was conveniently missing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that seems convenient. As for motive, no idea. Maybe we'll find out if that's the case. Her being gone and surviving is a little too convenient for her to not be a traitor, in my mind. Yeah. Also, nobody, she's not dead. Like, we haven't seen her dead, oh, no. so she's not, I'm assuming she's not dead yet. There's no way she's dead. Um... And also, um, yeah, Savala is probably, I think, in my mind, maybe a traitor. Um, But also, um, I was going to ask you, do you think that this was the only Hall of Smoke, like the main Hall of Smoke, or are there, like, other temples elsewhere? I think there are other... Well, I think there are other Ingi elsewhere. I don't know if there are other Halls of Smoke. Like this was the main hub for the Ingi. Yeah, because in the in chapter five, another flashback chapter, they're like debating where they want the girls to go, even though it's clear that they're both gifted and Ingi. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and they want them to go somewhere else. I don't remember where. Um, mm -hmm. But the high priestess has her eye on them. So they go with her to the Hall of Smoke. So I think that Ingi exists other places. Um, but I am not 100% on that. Sure. Yeah, it was... Okay, yeah. So it, it that makes sense that the Hall of Smoke is the only one. Makes it more mm -hmm. dramatic. Um, also, it's the name of the book. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Because she goes out to an altar on the mountain to make her petition. Like, she leaves the Hall of Smoke to do that. But that's clearly still a part of their religion to go to that altar. Right. So, like, I think altars to Ing exist other places. This is just, like, this is like going to um, the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. The heart of Catholicism. Yes. That is the Hall of Smoke. Instead of going to St. Mary's down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a good, good analogy, Anna. Thanks. We got there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to reiterate how cool the blood is magic thing is to me. I don't know what, I mean, that's like something that I use in my books oh, too yeah. a little bit, but like not to this degree. I kind of um, dig it. I'm also into it. I liked, I liked how they talked about how like blood is the source of life in everything and mm -hmm. magic involving runes is even more powerful when you draw the runes in blood because of that. And like, especially if it's a woman because women bleed like mm -hmm. once a month and in, and after giving like battle life. Mm -hmm. and giving life. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a really cool explanation for that. And it also makes sense why the high, the high priestess is a woman, you know, yeah. for like their, their rituals and stuff. Totally. Um, yeah. I also like that. Uh, it did. So yeah, it ended with them deliberating with the flashback chapter. Like, where are we going to send the girls? And we had that moment with Svala talking to, uh, Hessa about, her powers, mm -hmm. um, the you're a wizard Harry moment <laughs> with yes. you're an Ingi Hessa. Yeah. And, um, and what does going that off mean? To, mm -hmm. Yeah. Going off to learn how to do it. And they do talk about how, like, hopefully foreshadowing into like some super cool usages of the superpower. Um, how like, oh, I heard that Savala's, uh, Ingi powers are strong enough to like turn turn people's bones to ash with a scream and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, well, right. And, and, uh, part of the chapter talks about how Iska, did I say that right? Yes. Yeah. And, um, Hessa's powers are different, how they've manifested in different ways. Um, mm. also I do. So they're cousins. I had a brief moment of confusion in the last chapter because she's talking about how, her um, father and mother um, are kind of in a, um, how do I want to say this? It, it was interesting because we find, I was going to say polycule, but that's not the word I want to use. Um, no, it's polygamist, <laughs> it's not right. kind of. It's polygamous, but it's, um, it's, it's very, um, by it, reminds, by, it reminds me a lot of the Old Testament where like, your if your brother's if your brother dies then you take on his wife as your wife and to like carry on the family lineage or whatever. Um they've had kind of a similar right. thing happen. So then I was like, wait a minute. Do they share a dad? And I had to go back and look at where they she mentioned their hair, their father's hair, and it was a S apostrophe. So plural fathers possessive. So separate dads. Okay. I also had that thought and I wasn't sure. So thank you for clarifying that for me. Yes. I had, I was um, like, wait a minute. Are they, are they sister cousins or are they actually cousins? They're actually cousins. Actual um, cousins. But, but the dad is married to both the moms. Now. Yes. And, it, and there yeah. was like some hardship surrounding that. Like that was not an easy transition. Hmm, I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So that was the first, first little chunk. I'm really digging yeah. it. It's very different from all of the books we've read so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's been good. I'm liking it. Um, yeah. I think that I'm excited about the magic system and to learn more about that. And I'm excited for this kind of, I, I'm sure it's going to turn into like a cat and mouse game with Hessa and this, I'm sorry, his name starts with an O. 
Amaskat? The blue-eyed dude. Yeah, Amaskat. Amaskat, mm-hmm. Amaskat. okay. It's um, like Omaskat. Omaskat. Mm-hmm. Omaskat. I don't remember how the audiobook pronounced it. I'll, I'll, we'll get there. But we had a we had a whole like meeting of the minds before we started. How do we pronounce the names? Did anyone listen yeah. to the audiobook? <laughs> and I did, but there were some names that didn't register. But I'm sure he will come up later. Oh, for sure. You can't have a traitor like that and have him not come up again. Right. Right. Yeah. So now Hessa and company are still captured. And are likely going to get split up and sold into slavery. At least, we'll see. Um, we'll mm-hmm. see what happens. But I think that it's going to become a a mission to track that, that guy down and to take him out mm-hmm. to, uh, to atone. get back in the good graces uh, with um, her deity, the yeah. goddess of war. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to so, meet yeah. the goddess of war. Yeah, I think we will for it sure. Sounds real interesting. I'm here for. And it. I hope it's, I hope it's not just like a high buy thing. I hope, I mean, not like a main character necessarily, but more of like a mentor mm-hmm. role. Maybe that'd be yeah. cool. More of a Gandalf. Yeah, and plus, that'd be a way to really clue us in on lore stuff because yes. she lived it. <laughs> right. Correct. Yeah. So thanks for picking this one and for our Patreons, thanks for voting for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super cool. So for the next section, where are we reading to? You're going to read chapter 6 through 11. 6 through 11. Yep. Got it. Alrighty. Well, it's been good, so... We'll see where the next section takes us, but I guess until then, happy reading. And we'll talk at you next time. Later. Bye!